All right, in this video, we're going to be uh, studying chapter 22, section 1, which deals with organic chemistry. And this is our intro to the organic chem unit. Now, organic chemistry all has to do with carbon. In fact, the definition of an organic compound is any compound that contains carbon except for uh, carbonates, so you know, your calcium carbonate that forms chalk and whatnot, or oxides. In other words, carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide aren't uh, organic compounds, strictly speaking. Now you may be thinking to yourself, why does carbon get its own division of chemistry under the guise of organic chemistry? And it all has to do with the way carbon bonds. So if we draw a loose dot structure for carbon, you'll notice it has if we're just drawing the valence electrons. It has four valence electrons, each of which can bond to some other atom or element. And it can also bond to another carbon. So these two will naturally pair up in an up and down state. And you can have a network of carbons forming, you know, chains like so. You can get them into rings. And it's this diversibility of carbon to bond with itself that uh, is the basis for the study of organic chemistry in and of itself. And this process where it can form chains and rings is what is known as catenation. And in this catenation process, carbon can bond to itself with a single bond, a double bond, or even sometimes a triple bond. Now aside from just, you know, your carbon to carbon bonding. This carbon bonding affects all the elements near carbon that have similar electronegativity. For example, carbon can bind to oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and any of the halogens. But the simplest uh, carbon compounds we're going to look at are what are known as hydrocarbons. And these are composed solely of some number of carbons and some number of hydrogens. Now carbon bonding uh, is really interesting because you can have the same uh, molecular formula with a different arrangement. For example, you can bind together four carbons like so in a line, or you can bind your four carbons like so with a sort of uh, three and one branching off. And these two are related because they'd have the same chemical formula, you know, with hydrogen all around uh, each and every carbon, etc., in all these different places on each compound. And what you'll find is that both of these have the same chemical formula, which is C4H10. However, they have very different properties due to the branch on the one and the straight line in the other. So these are what are known as isomers. In other words, they have the same chemical formula. They're both what are known as uh, C4H10, strictly speaking, but they have a different arrangement of their atoms within the uh, formula. And these isomers exhibit different properties due to their different arrangements. So, we can't just use the standard uh, chemical equation listing the number of atoms of each type in a organic compound because they can exhibit different properties. So what we use is what is known as a structural formula. And it's basically sort of a uh, crude drawing of how the atoms are arranged. So in this case we have our four carbons in a chain, each surrounded by hydrogen to complete the one, two, three, four bonds necessary. Likewise, over here we have our three carbons in the chain and one branching off in the middle, each surrounded by the necessary hydrogen to complete their four valence electrons. And you can also simplify these structural formulas to sort of condense them by uh, basically writing uh, a chemical formula for each constituent part. So for example you have the CH3 attached to a CH attached to another CH3 with a final CH3 on the bottom just to condense all this down. Looking more in depth now at isomers and their differences, uh, there's two main types of isomers. One is structural isomers and the other is geometric isomers. So the isomers we looked at before are what are known as structural isomers. In other words, 
they have the same atoms bonded together, but in a different order. So in this case, instead of having carbons 1, 2, 3, 4 in a chain, you have three going this way and one going this way. Despite that, both will have uh, the formula C4H10, if you were to just write it with our old chemical formula. Now geometric isomers are somewhat opposite. In other words, they have the same order, but different arrangement. So, in the case of 1,2-dichloroethene, uh, that we see here, you can either have your chlorines both up top like this, or have one up and one down across from each other. And so, these are what are known as geometric isomers, because they have different arrangements, but they have the same order, the same chemical formula, everything else is the same. And this up top, where both chlorines are up here, is called a cis isomer. And over here, where you have to come across, you have to go through the molecule to connect one to the other, or let's say the hydrogen to the hydrogen, this is what is known as a trans molecule. And that's actually where we get the term trans fat, is from a certain uh, group being across from one another rather than both up parallel like this, and that leads to some negative health effects with trans fats.